Hey guys, welcome back to another Weird Wednesday. I'm Ashers and this is Pat O. Pat O. How was your weekend? Very not bad. Very not bad. Wonderful. Well, I know that you want to talk about that. It's going to be hard to talk about this without giving anything away, but uh, how was Halloween Kills? I I dug the shit out of it. I really, really <laughs> did. Um, I'm not a fan of the Halloween franchise. Uh, it's definitely of the big three. If we talk about Freddy, Jason, uh, Michael Myers, Halloween is at the way bottom of the list. Doesn't even come close. I'm much more of a Friday the third, or I'm sorry, Nightmare on Elm Street type guy. Um, those are the, that's the franchise I grew up on. That's the aesthetic that I, I like. Um, lots of nudity, lots of surreal dream logic stuff. Uh, kick ass soundtrack, you know, um, Halloween movies don't have a lot of titties. You know, they're kind of uh, <laughs> some eh, not, not they don't do it nearly as well as Friday the 13th and, and Nightmare on Elm Street. Do. Uh, yeah, I just never I never liked the Halloween movies. You know, I've seen probably I didn't even see the one that came right before this one. Oh, um, really? You did? not Yeah, you didn't I didn't see that one. No, the, I, I've seen um, I, I saw the number six, the one with Paul Rudd. I saw that in the theater when I was a kid. I saw H2O in the theater. Um you know, with Josh Hartnett and Jamie Lee Curtis. And then I saw the first Rob Zombie one, like a roommate got a bootleg of it. And then I found out that the cut that I saw wasn't even the right cut. Like there was a different cut or something. Um, I did see Resurrection, which is like the found footage or like the, the webcam one. Yeah. And then um, when all those sucked, I mean, none of them were great. Like, like H2O and like, the one before it with Paul Rudd weren't terrible, but it was just like, I don't know, whatever. Um, but this, I thoroughly enjoyed. I really, really did. Um, it was brutal. It was entertaining enough. I walked into it not necessarily knowing what was happening. I mean, I knew the general story, but like like I said, I hadn't seen Halloween 2018. Was able to pick up more or less what was going on and uh, enjoyed it. I would have done the ending a little bit different. Uh, I would have ended it basically on the same note but the uh the final battle i probably would have shot differently but other than that like i i, I dug it i really did what yeah, about you I, I i felt very much the same way um and i feel very much the same way i'm also not a huge halloween fan i mean yeah it's classic or whatever but like it's just not it's just like the body it's there's not that much of a body count in all the movies like it's a lot right. of story and it's kind of stupid and I love John Carpenter, but if I had to pick like my top five John Carpenter movies, Halloween would not be in there, and it would barely yeah. make the top ten. Yeah, it's. Yeah, I agree it, with you. I, yeah. I I don't think I would put Halloween in there either. Um, you know, and it, like I said, it's classic. Don't get me wrong. I just I feel like it's very overhyped. Um, you know, and as a series in general, um, I mean, it's it's okay. It's just that I, you know, if it's on, I'll put it on, but I never go out of my way to watch it anymore because I've seen it so many times. And maybe that's just it. Um, I did see the 2018 version. Um, actually, I saw H2O at the drive in as a kid, um, but I haven't watched it as an adult. And like, I can't sit down and watch it as an adult. Like, I don't, I've tried and I get bored. <laughs> and I can't, <laughs> as much as I love Jamie Lee Curtis and I love that they kind of went back to it, but it doesn't matter now because I have these movies. I like Halloween 2018 for what it was, um, but it's pretty forgettable. This one is not that way, I don't think. I don't think this one's forgettable at all. I think this is my my favorite of the entire franchise, including the original. You know, I feel like the entire series, the entire franchi franchise, the only thing they've ever talked about when it comes to Michael Myers is basically how he's like this embodiment of evil, and I just never saw that. I mean, he just never seemed that way until this movie, and... I appreciated the heck out of it. And so I've seen a lot of people complain about the plot. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't watch a slasher movie for the plot. And uh, I watch it for the slashes. And there's lots of slashing. <laughs> so it, it, it delivered. I was I was ex super excited. I mean, leaving the theater, I was super happy. I didn't give a shit about the plot. It didn't matter anyway. It moved so fast. You know, um, but, you know, I I am petitioning the world um you know if you've seen it to create a prequel <clears throat> strictly based on the characters of big john and little john i want to know their story i want to know how they met 
like i love these characters i love them and i want to know their story how did you meet how did I you mean, acquire the Myers house what happened who are you you know we I, could, I could i could at least write some fan fiction about their first about big john little john about their first night together and it, with with a with a dinosaur or something that is not the same thing <laughs> It's you know, to include okay. dinosaurs in this in this fucking prequel, oh, uh, but I liked it. I really enjoyed it. Um, you know, it was it was a good time. So yeah, <laughs> can I read? I just you know what I was not even planning on doing this as like a uh, as like a, a a skit for the show, but like this one somebody that I'm friends with on Facebook, and I might even I might even unfriend them after this, but I, I usually let people say their piece. But this is what this guy wrote and i just want to read part of it because hold on is it spoiler free yes i know and if it's not you know this one's hard not to spoil well i don't i mean it this one's really hard not to spoil i don't know i guess it depends on what the spoiler is like do you you know that there's a third one like this was part of a trilogy so like you know there's another one like i don't know Okay, I don't, I don't think it's so much that, you know, if Michael dies or not, because obviously it doesn't. It's about who else does. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. All right. So, uh, anyway, here's this guy's review. Unsolicited, posted on Facebook, but I screen grabbed it and sent it to my sure. friends. Uh, this was a terrible movie. I was bored out of my mind. Let's see. Pathetic dialogue, slow as heck, pointless scenes, lame kills, and woke crap up the wazoo. The whole Michael trying to kill Lori gag is pretty old by now. This, this franchise needed a new concept or a fresh start in order to stay alive. The worst part is the writing, which I would so fucking disagree with. Uh, I have seen, I haven't seen such a bad script in a long time. He should read one of mine. I'm not expecting a plot that will touch my soul, but I paid to see Michael kill. Instead, I got a bunch of old people trying to be superheroes. A, a three female generation of failures and the saga of a gay couple's love nest. If I hear someone say Little John one more fucking time, I'm going to stab someone. Also, there is an insane scene of a mob confusing one, one short, frumpy Danny DeVito looking looking like lunatic for the Michael Myers. It's so ridiculous. It's like if you confuse Lizzo for Nicki Minaj. Not only you need glasses, but you are insane. By the way, by the way, Michael hates LGBTQs and old folks now. Instead of killing horny teenagers, Michael perfectly checks off his new 2021 Hollywood agenda list so he gets a theatrical release. Wow. So no, I had I and this person, like, I was like, dude, like, you're... Well, you definitely need to. Like, nobody needs that fucking negativity in their life. Like, <laughs> don't, don't, talk, don't come on the internet and talk shit about Big John and or Little John because I will come for you. Okay, first of all. Second of all, again, I went to go watch a slasher movie and that's what I got. And if you're expecting more than that after the fucking Cult of the Thorn storyline... <laughs> <laughs> exactly and you're a dumb <laughs> shit i well, mean and, come and on i think that's what helped me is that that's that was my entry point into the series is watching oh, that's uh, paul rudd with a british accent as tommy doyle try to defeat michael myers with magic rocks so like if that's yeah. where i come into halloween anything else from that is, <laughs> is just yeah it's just like whatever um <laughs> so yeah i uh i don't know what kind of reverence people hold these franchises in like i didn't like the nightmare on elm street remake so you no, know what i did i, I went I home everybody agrees with that yeah I, I just went home and i watched a new nightmare and nightmare on elm street 2 and then nightmare on elm street 3 and nightmare on elm street 4 like i i love those movies and like no matter what they do it's not going to erase like how awesome the original series was which wasn't even awesome all the time you know um it just it, had- and it wasn't i and as somebody that you know freddie's my favorite like I don't like Halloween too. I don't or Halloween. I don't like Nightmare on Elm Street too. Really? I, I don't like that one. No. Well, you're not a closeted gay man, so you don't appreciate it the way. That's that true. Do. Yeah. So. <laughs> Trust me. Yeah. I've I've danced around my bedroom with fucking Elton John sunglasses on, you know, singing into singing into a brush before. Wow. Uh, we, we've all been that there. I think if you were closeted before, you're definitely not now. But. <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah. Nightmare on Elm Street 2 is definitely my favorite. Well, no, I did not like that two, one. 2, 3, 4 I... is like my favorite run. I, you know, I'd have to honestly say New Nightmare might be my favorite just because of what it attempts. It swings for the fucking fences, man. I love that, that was and it, and it did a good job. It did a really good job doing it. Um, mm-hmm. I like New Nightmare. But, like, I really liked Freddy's Dead, the final nightmare. And, and I'm not a lot of people like that one. But it was is so fucking night- corny. 
the '90s one with Breck and Meyer. Oh, I don't know who the Where fuck he's in a video game on the comic yep. book one. Yeah, yeah, that one. Um, no, the comic book one wasn't in that one. I don't think. I think that was in uh, like five four and six. Or five? No, it definitely wasn't four. I know, I know two, three, four, like the back of my hand. One I know pretty well, but I just don't revisit it enough. Five and six are the two that I'm least familiar with. And okay. then new new nightmare I know pretty well too, yeah. but uh, and the, but the remake the remake was shit that was awful. Yeah, uh, but I agree. Freddy's Freddy's definitely the better slash. I and mean, come on now, it's creative, it's funny, it's fun. It doesn't take itself too seriously. How could you not like that over freaking anybody else? And Jason's okay, but it, it's all you see one Friday the Thirteenth movie, you've seen them all. Yeah, he kills people at camp. Well, and, that was. Until he, until he goes to Manhattan, and then also until he goes to space. So <laughs> you mean you mean Vancouver? Yeah, I oh, that one I I had seen Jason goes to hell in the theater, and that was my entry point in the series. So that was what I thought Friday the Thirteenth movies were, and then which is like a super stylized action movie. And then when I went back and I watched the actual series, I was very disappointed. Um, yeah, because I, Jason goes, oh, that's just what I thought the tone was. That's what I thought the energy level was. And I, I really love that movie. And uh, nope, <laughs> that's, that's not what the majority yeah. of the franchise the, is. The best uh, one out of Friday the 13th is number one. And then after that is number three. Number one's the best one because it wasn't really a horror movie, right? It had a big twist at the end. And so, you know, that's that's what made it. But if, if you, chances are, you're not going to be able to watch the first movie brand new with n- no e- expectation whatsoever. You know what I mean? Now, th- we're so far removed from, from the first movie with Jason that, you know, you're not going to get that same aha moment that people got when they first saw that movie. Um, but you know, that's probably the first one and then number three is the better one. And then I really don't give a shit about the rest. Um, but anyway, uh, anyway, horror movies. Um, (laughs) if you want to hear more about horror movies, I'll be starting a horror movie podcast soon. So, uh, I'll let you guys know when that happens. Um, nice. That's super exciting. I know. Super exciting. Um, we're Polly. It's okay. I, I give you my full blessing. (laughs) I don't know if I'm going to, oh. I'm breaking stuff at my house. I don't know if I'm going to do it with another person or not. I think they're just going to be kind of short and just kind of me talking about movies by myself. Just something easy I can do and, and put out there. And, you know, people seem to want to hear what I have to say about it. So uh, I'll keep sure. you guys in the loop on when that happens. But anyway, what else did you do with your weekend? Uh, one more thing I want to talk about is uh, Saturday we went we saw Kiss. So um, that was a lot of fun. I, did, uh, did you kiss them? No, they were very far away. Uh me and my son painted our faces uh i gave him the option to i I didn't make him but i said look you know this is this might be the last time that they tour or the last time that we see them and i'm not going to make you paint your face but if you don't 10 15 years from now you might regret it so but i'll leave it up to you and he was like all right fine so we painted our faces and a bunch of weird kiss fans came up and talked to us all night and um yeah so that that That's was it. Cool. I, I definitely wanted to mention this though because uh I've only had our listeners reach out to me personally, like on Twitter, about two things. Um my love for transport and my love for kiss. So <laughs> if, I, if people don't reach out to me to talk about like UFOs or the paranormal, <laughs> it's always yeah. like right. <laughs> like, oh, you like chicks with dicks? Oh, you like kiss? <laughs> so um I just wanted to give a shout out to my demographic. <laughs> <laughs> say what's up guys uh you're cool too and uh, i took my kid to see kiss so there you go <laughs> did, he, did he enjoy himself did he have a good time was he into it yeah yeah he dug it and uh yeah yeah my kid isn't um she's not into the things that i'm into so well, like, you gotta... i don't know i haven't taken her to a concert yet well this was outdoors we had bought lawn seats uh, initially and um oh my god i will bring this up we had we had bought lawn seats initially and um you know in a lot of these situations like the concerts don't sell out but they want to fill the pavilion seats so they'll kind of give away pavilion seats to people in the lawn and um i was buying uh our overpriced kiss t-shirts while my wife was going to get the lawn chairs that we had rented to sit on the lawn and someone from the venue saw her with my son who had paul stanley makeup on and gave us free pavilion upgrades so we got to go and and sit 
in the pavilion closer to the stage. That's and, cool. Which, which, I'm, which I'm totally glad we did. I don't know why at the age of 40, I'm still even considering buying fucking lawn seats. I'm just being cheap again. But uh, <laughs> we definitely were better off in the pavilion. And there was this chick in front of us that like must have been some kind of sex worker, which I am not passing judgment on. But like she had on like like, st- like garters and then panties and then like a leather like halter top with her with like cupcake boobs like way too tight and like her boobs were spilling on the top and it was all like black leather and like chain and when we're all sitting there because they don't have an opening band kiss has this dude come out that like paints shit on stage so like everybody's sitting for the opening act right and then you know kiss comes out and you know the, or the lights go down and they say you know the hottest you know you wanted the best you got the best the hottest band in the world kiss everyone jumps up they kick it into detroit rock city and this chick jumps up, and for the first time, we're all seeing what she's wearing. And she is, like, directly in front of my son, like, three rows in front. There's no one, in the in like, sitting in front of him. But there's people around us. And he goes, oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> Me and, I posted a picture of it on my Twitter because my wife took a picture. He's like, look at that whore. And uh, we were just all fucking laughing our asses off because he could not believe what he was fucking seeing. And, I mean, he's... I mean, I can I can remember being like in eighth grade and going to an auto show and seeing like the, the car girls for the first time. And it was the first time that I was ever around like a really hot woman in a bikini. Like you see pictures of them, but you're never like around them. You know what I mean? And like going to like the, the auto show and being like, oh, my God, like she's right there. Like I could take a picture with her and stuff. And it was kind of like the same thing with him. Like I don't think he's ever seen anything like that like real life in front of him well I, was, I, I don't know what you mean because i'm not a, a pre-pubescent boy but <laughs> that's exciting no that's it was very apropos that's okay. for a kiss concert i'll say that yeah, that's, that's okay hey that's yeah. all right i'm glad that uh that sounds like you guys had a really good time so that sounds fun yeah so that was that that's it cool. was my wife's birthday too so i have a birthday joe oh happy birthday joe wow uh, that's, that's right it. it was her birthday I, I saw that i'm just I've had a weird weekend myself. I went to um, I went to uh, we had our uh, Halloween festival in in Halloween Town, Ohio. Basically, it's Fairborn, Ohio, and um, you know, it's always a good time, and and it was, it was a good time. There was a lot less going on. They didn't do it last year, um, but my friend Cherish owns the Secret Chamber House of Oddities and Artwork right there on the main strip. Um, she did do an event of sorts last year because it is her anniversary. Um, the festival always falls during her anniversary weekend or week or whatever for opening her her store and um so she had an event last year but there was no festival and usually the festival's huge and there's lots of people now there was lots of people and it was pretty big um but we went and uh it was pretty good time it was a good time we um you know there were some performers there there was this um there was this guy who i don't know he was making like he was like parodying he wasn't parodying i can't say it parodying parodying I can't say it. Pirouetting? When you make a, when you make a parody of something? Parodying. Par- 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 parodying. Par- I can't say it. <laughs> I don't know why. There was a guy making fucking synth music outside dresses as a fucking Elvis skeleton. It was pretty legit. Okay. And, uh, and then my, my friends did, uh, you know, my friends do, they're part of this group called Sage Fire, the Fire Dancers. They did their performance outside. It was pretty neat. Oh, that's cool. Um, the highlight, though, of my weekend was that I acquired, this is going to sound weird, but I acquired my first human remain this weekend. Wow. My first piece of person. Yep. I have one rib bone. I don't know anything about it. Mm. I don't know where it came from. I don't care. I don't know how old they were. It doesn't matter to me. Um, (laughs) I'm excited about it. No, human remains are fucking difficult to get a hold of. Like you don't, you don't just fucking come upon human remains. And if you do, like they're super expensive again. So my friend owns this, this shop and she sells all kinds of stuff like that. And, uh, you know i walk in there and she's like oh look at this and i was like oh my gosh my weird little heart did a backflip i was so excited so i get this uh i get this human rib okay and it was great um and i'm super stoked about it and we leave okay and we leave and i didn't drive my car but we took my car and so uh will was driving my friend will was driving my car and uh while we're driving home the brakes went out on my car (laughs) And I don't know if it's related to the fact that I just took home a human rib 
Um, I, I have no idea. But not just that. So, like, the brakes are going out on my car. And Will's attempting to get the car back. I'm going to go completely out. Um, it's getting fixed as we speak. But, um, you know, while he's driving my car, he also receives a phone call that his mother-in-law was carrying his child into the home into his home and or whatever and she tripped and fell on top of the baby and Whoa. i was like what the fuck like literally back to back oh so we went there. the baby's fine the mom good. she she completely destroyed her wrist though she had to get surgery on it mm. and uh you know whatever but it was just weird i was like holy shit dude and just all day i just felt so out of sorts and weird and not good and even though i should have been having a great time don't get me wrong i had a great time at the festival but it was just hard for me to get too excited about it i've just been in this weird funk lately but yeah. uh it, yeah it was strange so like i said i don't know if having this human bone is why but um i'm just gonna say that it's not it's absolutely not that it's cursed or haunted or anything like that so i'm excited about it but that was pretty much my weekend and then sunday i just fucking got drunk and watched king of the hill <laughs> hey man all right <laughs> my, my my son started yo-yoing uh-huh. <laughs> so now like whenever he's doing it i always like text my wife bobby hill pictures because it seems like such a bobby hill thing to do <laughs> fucking yo yo. <laughs> Only if you think Bobby Hill is like a terrible character or something, and comparing your kid to that is like terrible. But well, that's true. I do really like Bobby Hill, but right, like uh, you know, sometimes you just gotta fucking just say fuck it and get drunk and watch King of the Hill, man. I mean, yeah, that's, that's a good time. But um, anyway, so yeah, that was uh basically my weekend and and my week. Like I said, um, I am gearing up for this horror podcast. I've got lots of fun things coming up. CryptidCon, CryptidCon's still going on. Um, the weekend right before Thanksgiving, so about a month from now, actually, I think almost to date, a month from now. So that's super fucking exciting. Um, yeah. Do you have anything else to share about your weekend, or should I get into the news? No, um, I'm gonna be at Game Hall this uh, upcoming weekend, and uh the what is that the 20 something to the 20 22nd through the 24th uh uh tobias whalen is going to be there we'll be there unofficially i'll be wearing my or like we're not there like promoting our our paranormal endeavors we're going to be there playing games like fucking dorks but uh yeah so after that i am coming back and it'll be all attention on crypticon but um I have to get get through game hole first. That's my one. I have to. I can only plan one outing to meet internet friends at a time. So <laughs> we'll get through get through this weekend, and then I'll be all over that crypt account shit. But I'm definitely stoked about that too. That's so, no, that's super exciting. I'm 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 excited that you get to meet uh, Kobe. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, that'll be neat. I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna hook up on Saturday for a little bit and just see what we can see. And uh, sure. Be cool. I got my. I already uh, know what I'm going to be wearing. I got my on Wednesdays we talk weird shirt in the mail this week, oh, and I got to yeah? say I got I didn't get the fanny pack yet, but I got the shirt. And I got to say this: it's way better quality than the fucking kiss shirt that I spent like three times as much on at the concert. Oh, is that so, right? Yes. So if you want high quality T-shirts, don't buy kiss shirts. Buy on Wednesday we talk weird shirts, <laughs> and those things I, I can already tell this kiss shirt's going to last me like two washes. I'm going to use it to wipe my dick off after sex and that'll be the end of it. You know, uh, on Wednesday, we talk weird shirts look like they can handle all kinds of fucking all the bodily fluids, all <laughs> kinds of weirdness. You know what I mean? Things going to have some tales to tell. Well, you know, that's mm-hmm. what it's, I can't believe you didn't get the fanny pack yet. That's you bought them both together. Didn't you? I'm pretty sure I did. I almost want to go back now that I'm thinking of it. I almost want to go back and check my, uh, check my order. Cause I, it, it was weird they didn't both come at once, right? I mean, maybe, it, it might be, and it might not be. I mean, I guess I would check it, but I'm that kind of paranoid person. But um, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll look into that. But uh, no, that's cool. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited so. that you got it. I've got. I was uh, actually I was going through my clothes yesterday. I've got two of the booby shirts, and I have one on Wednesdays. We talk weird shirt, and uh, I need to get a jersey devil. I need to just buy one. You know, all of them um there should be actually new merch dropping very soon um some very exciting stuff so 
Um, I've been talking with a, a specific artist who's been making a lot of things uh, in the way of design and stuff like that. So really exciting stuff coming up there. Um, and then, of course, I, I know I said that we're supposed to be debuting this uh, hotline thing this week, but that was before oh, like right. that, that was before I had depression and stuff. So um, but it's still there. It's still open. <laughs> I still want you guys to call. And, uh, you know, I completely do, do, forgot about that. Do you have depression? Maybe you have depression and you want to tell us about it. Um, call us at uh, 773-59-WEIRD and uh, mm. the offer still on the table. We're still doing the damn thing. Just. I just, like I said, as life happens, whatever. It's my show. I can do whatever I want. I can completely destroy the hotline. So you better get your fucking calls in before I do. I don't know. I think I'm threatening the fans now. <laughs> Call us or else. Um, but no, really, uh, you know, share your spooky stories, share your theories about things, topic suggestions, things you want to hear us talk about. Um, maybe you want Pat to talk more about kiss and, and chicks with dicks. I don't know. You know, um, you know, that's which I will. What, he will. Or not, I will. <laughs> you know, just let us know. People are getting that shit for free around here these days. Uh, <laughs> speaking of scary stories, don't you have a uh, something coming up this week? Do I have something coming uh, on up Thursday? Week? Oh, yeah, that's right. See, I don't even know what's happening with my own life anymore. Thank uh, you. Um, yeah, actually, uh, on Thursday, the what is that? The 21st? Yep, Thursday the 21st, I will be doing another CryptoCasters. Um, we're going to be sharing some some super spoopy tales, which if you like this episode, you'll definitely like that. Um, I'm not sharing an episode from this episode here, uh, you know, over there. So I'm sharing something completely different, but we're just going to be talking about um, personal experiences that we've had with the paranormal or anything in particularly scary. It's actually a great panel. Um I know that the chicks from Paranormally Blonde are going to be on there. Of course, it's Greg from All the Weird that's hosting it. Um, Greg Morrill, he's great. So definitely check that out. You can find all the all the Clubhouse information underneath my link tree. You can find my page directly. You can follow me. It'll notify you whenever I'm, I'm doing that. So um, super exciting. Love Clubhouse. It, I, really do. I might actually, I mean, I, I usually listen to those. But if uh, if I end up listening this Thursday, I may participate as well. Since Ooh. anyone that listens to this show knows that I have an abundance, an embarrassment of spooky stories that have happened to me. So I'm sure I can dust one off. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that would be just fine. So, I mean, we'll all be there. But uh, yeah, that's this Thursday, the 21st, October 21st. Um, I think that's the only thing I really have to plug right now. I got a lot of stuff planned. Um, I do have a lot of different shows that I'll be appearing on and things like that that I definitely want you guys to check out. Um, you know, check out my buddies over at the, the Bloody Bits Horror Show podcast, especially if you're excited about me doing podcasting um, about horror movies. That's what they do all the time. And I will be going back on the show very soon. Um, but I, I talked about uh, we did a show on Cannibal Holocaust and um, people really seem to like it because you guys are sick. Yeah. But that's fine. I love you for it. So <laughs> go check that out. Also, <laughs> um, I think that's my last plug for the week. Um, I don't really have like news news, but I do have something that I wanted to discuss a little, um, little hot take, little <laughs> discussion here. Sure. Um, Demi Lovato has been like all about aliens lately. Yeah, so you know where this is going. Yeah, I, uh, have you watched? Okay, I'm gonna let you do your thing. No, I have Sorry. not. I've not watched it. I've not. I'm not probably not going to, to be honest with you. Um, but she recently came out and she is mad because she says that we, it's rude for us to call aliens aliens because that's derogatory. We should call them ETs. Now, listen. <clears throat> I'm not sure who Demi Lovato thinks she is. I usually really like the girl. To be honest with you, I don't give a shit about many celebrities at all in general, and she's still one of them. But I've never had a reason to not like her before. But when you try to speak on behalf of somebody else's race or ethnicity or species... As a white person, like, you are absolutely not supposed to do that. Like, that is not okay. Like, that's the most racist shit that you can possibly do. Like, so she comes out, she says that aliens derogatory because we use it to mean negative things. It was always a negative term, and we just need to kind of get rid of that one. Pat, what do you think about that? She is so fucking hot. Like, 
crippling crippling beauty i i I'm first saw her talking about being pc and you're like oh boobies i first saw her on will and grace and i had no idea who she was and i was like who the fuck is that and whoever i was with at the time was like that's demi lovato i'm like i don't know who that is and they were like are you fucking whatever <laughs> whatever they called me at the time i would say but uh and i had to look her up because i i had no idea who this woman was um my god my God, she is. I, I don't get goofy over celebrities, like attractive celebrities or anything like that. I I wasn't someone that like grew up watching Baywatch and shit like that. Um, she is one of the most attractive females alive on this planet today. And I say that in front of you and everyone that's listening. I, I don't know who you are that are listening right now, but chances are Demi Lovato is more attractive than you. I'm sorry. Uh, that being said, I don't like her new haircut and I don't like the show. All right. Um, it's, it's, I, I appreciate where she's coming from. I appreciate her interest in the subject. And I think it's nice whenever the paranormal, you know, all we had for the longest time was Sammy Hagar when it came to rock stars endorsing, uh, aliens and, and all that stuff. Right. <laughs> the only thing we had was Sammy Hagar and his goofy fucking story from 1970. Um, so having her get involved and claim to be an experiencer and this TV show, all, all good things, all things in the right direction. Um, but when I actually sat down to watch the show and it was edited and ha- had the same style as like an episode of the bachelor or something, it was very like goofy reality show. We're all going to go to Joshua tree. We're like three friends on a trip, you know, blah, blah, Um, I don't know. That's when I feel like there might be a disconnect and I'm just too old to get it. Right. Like this is not, um, this is not sightings for this generation, right? My generation growing up, we had Unsolved Mysteries. We had sightings. We had shows like that, right? And this is not the equivalent of that. The, the, this is not geared towards me. This is geared towards 17-year-olds and 20-year-olds and or something. Is it effective like that? Maybe. I don't, I don't, but I am the wrong motherfucker to ask. I have no idea. Um, so I, I, I'm a fan of her. I'm Will and Grace. She was really hot. Um, this whole thing now, I just walk away from and say, I don't know. Now with her wanting to pick fights about fucking words to use once again, don't ask a fucking 40 year old white guy to weigh in on that shit. Cause you know what I'm going to fucking say? <laughs> you know what I mean? I think this is like, I don't know. Whatever, whatever, I'll tell you what, whatever the aliens say they want to be called, I'll call them. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Hey, I don't give a <laughs> shit. Like, when the aliens, know. but when the aliens make a statement saying you can no longer call us aliens, you now have to refer to us as fucking whatever, whatever, whatever. I will try my best yeah. <laughs> to remember that and, and get that out and i'll probably fuck it up for about 18 months but and then eventually i'll get used to it and i'll use the proper pronouns you know and it'll be all good but yeah don't ask a four-year-old white guy what he thinks yeah. about this fucking topic yeah <laughs> i uh right i mean it's no it's a weird thing and i, I just like that is not the shit we need to be talking about You're like, fighting tell you it's ridiculous yeah right, let me tell you something advanced life doesn't give a shit about these to them this stuff is petty like if we take the stories of like indrid cold as truth you know what they say is like they don't fight about shit like this like they got over this a long time ago and they're way past that so i mean if the aliens are offended by being called aliens then they need to say something they need to come out and have a whole press conference and be like we're aliens and uh and uh, we want to be called this. And I tell you what, nobody's going to give a shit what they want to be called. They're just going to be so, you know, either thrilled or spooked or terrified or whatever that there's aliens, you know. <laughs> nobody's going to care. Uh, we'll call them whatever the fuck you want. But it was just ridiculous. I mean, why even say anything like that? It's just so weird. Well, because she's trying to present herself as, listen, if, if she is to be believed, which I'm willing to believe her, that she had this experience, then her desire to go public about it maybe she, first of all maybe she's a fucking cia shell i have no idea anytime like this is this is weird positioning for her right um but 
it's it's keeping her in the press. It's keeping her in the public spotlight. This could be just another pivot. You know what I mean? Like, remember when the when the Kardashians used to come out with iPhone apps or, or makeup lines every fucking six months, and they'd make another hundred million dollars or something? Oh, yeah. You know, this could just be another branding thing to get herself known as some kind of weird spiritual leader or something i have no idea maybe she had a genuine experience and she's wrestling with it and she's doing it in the public eye i can identify with that i I get that she's not necessarily she doesn't know how to process it she doesn't know what to say what to believe but you know and but she's got this platform and she wants to make the most of it look at everything tom DeLong did you know what i mean we're like he he tried to and i made the sammy hagar jerk joke earlier you know who sammy hagar is yes he was the second singer for van halen he yep. for the longest time he's claimed to have alien experiences and he has an abduction story in his in the an auto, autobiography that he released like in the 90s he talks about an abduction experience he had in the 70s so like i mean there's been people over the years that have been famous or semi-famous and and have had these stories and gone public with them and you know it's weird to see them try to get involved and lend their celebrity to it because it's such a hard thing to nail down in general. No one can really agree. If you look at like all the, like, look, we can't even agree what to call the Texas Chupacabra, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, that's true. Like it's hard. Okay. It's, it's hard to like, it's like herding cats. It's hard to get like a movement to like head in one coherent direction and have everyone be on board with that so whenever you get these people that like try to lend their celebrity status and lend their stuff to go do it you know everyone's going to talk about how they're making a fucking mistake or they're doing it the wrong way look at time to long now look at demi lovato um i don't know i i guess any attention she brings any any kind of reaching across the aisle that she does that turns more non-believers into believers isn't that a positive thing you know what I mean? If she if she does this goofy fucking show as badly edited and packaged as it is, and it changes the mind of a thousand teenage girls to be more receptive to the, the idea of life outside of this exist, you know, human existence or whatever, isn't it a good thing? I, 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 I agree. You know, I agree with that to a degree. It just it makes it difficult because we've got two. We kind of have two different people in this community and uh, we've got, you know, the actual investigators and researchers and then we have the entertainers and um, sometimes you're both and that's hard and, you know, it's either you're leaning towards one side or you're leaning towards the other and if you lean too far towards the wrong side of it, um, then you are hurting, you know, the, the, the actual science behind it, right? And, uh, and, and I, you know, there's a lot of debate of, you know, over this a lot within this type of community and, um, you know, with the Demi Lovato stuff, I mean, is her story genuine? I don't know, guys. I haven't, I haven't even watched it. I don't fucking know. You know, I'm not going to tell you what I think about it because I don't know anything about it. Um, but you're right. Is it exposure? Sure. Sure. And some of those weird kids are going to grow up to be weird adults and maybe they're going to dig a little bit deeper and they're going to realize that that story is total bullshit. Um, but sometimes they just kind of follow whatever it is anybody has to say, you know, their, their idols have to say about it without actually doing the work. And then you got these morons going around making a mockery of, of the field. And that kind of hurts a little bit more because it kind of keeps it away from being taken seriously, you know, and, and that's hard. Um, but, you know, I don't know. I'm not the one that dictates it. I don't write the rules for the community, but, um, you know, I, I think a lot of people would agree with that you know that's it it has I both think, it's both i think there's lots of damaging personalities in quote unquote the field i think there's lots of different character types that are doing more harm than good and they don't all come across they're they're, they're not all you know attractive 29 year old girls that used to be on barney and friends i you know um i i don't think she's the worst thing in the world i think the you know <laughs> if i mean I, I don't want to pick out who i think public enemy number one is when it comes to this kind of shit i think it, it's more likely the people that shut down ideas in general it's the gatekeepers uh you know the neckbeard gatekeepers that want to fucking you know dox you because you say that bigfoot's an angel or some shit like i don't know fucking who's on what side of what yeah but and they're I, terrible I just, 
yeah, I think anyone that's if you're trying to shut down the sharing of ideas, then you are the enemy. I think if you have goofy ideas, then you're just goofy and you know and anything that leads to discourse is not necessarily a bad thing because in the end good ideas you know float to the top but as long as you're facilitating conversation and you're talking and you're exchanging information and ideas i think you're okay i think you're okay i think it's when you get to the people that want to shut take the mic away from others you know what i mean i think those are the bad guys those are the ones we you know it's like not everyone's a nazi Got, can't keep calling people Nazis unless they're fucking Nazis. We got to realize who the bad guys are and focus our sights on them and not pick fights with everybody around us that's different or disagrees with what we think. Okay. And I don't think Demi Lovato is necessarily a Nazi. I, I don't think she's the bad guy here. Um, maybe I don't agree with the way she goes about things. And, you know, eh, some of it's kind of fucking stupid and annoying and like, once again, I'm 40. I'm old. You know what I mean? And she's definitely has a different demographic than that. Sure. And I guess I kind of, I, I could appreciate that, you know, and I could see the benefit in bringing that demographic to this side of, you know, the conversation. Um, but I guess that's where I'm at with it. You know? I mean, I, you know, at least it is getting some type of exposure. You know, I, I, I know what you mean. I just feel like enough people believe in this kind of stuff that, it, we're to the point now to where we don't, we don't have to just be like, who cares? People are talking about it. We don't have to be that way anymore. Um, I, I think that, you know, as investigators, now it's our responsibility to really bring good, credible information to the table to be like, okay, cool. You're looking at us. Great. Here's why you should take us seriously. Um, you know, and that's that's our jobs. But but then it really stops there. I mean, I don't give a shit. Watch whatever you want. I don't care. You know, <laughs> at the end of the day, I really don't care. Listen to whatever you want. Listen to whoever you want. Subscribe. As long to as it's our podcast, make sure you listen. To as the long podcast. as you're listening to my podcast, yeah, it's our it's our podcast. Um, you know, and uh, I don't know. What do you guys think about the uh, Demi Lovato's? Um, what do you think about our show? Have you watched it? Have you? Uh, what do you think about the term uh, aliens? Do you think that it's a good idea? Um, you know what you can do about it. You can call seven seven three. Now I'm here. Now I'm here. <laughs> sure. <laughs> was that for show hosting? Um, but uh, no, <laughs> really. I mean, it's silly. I think it's. I think it's silly on a personal level. I think it's really ridiculous that she's saying that um, <laughs> about the term aliens. But you know, then again, I mean, what the fuck do I know? I'm I'm a white woman. I mean, I don't I don't face racism. So right, there's that aspect of it yeah, too. Hey. We're like. I get that that word has multiple meanings and, you know, I don't know, whatever. I call them ultra terrestrial anyway. So what the fuck does that matter if I think the aliens are a bad word? I just, I just refer to them as the little doctors that live in the closet. What? The little doctors that live in the closet. What? <laughs> you had a weird childhood. Because <laughs> they come out of the, they come out of the closet and they, they, they examine you. And they're doctors. <laughs> and they go back in the closet, the little blue doctors. Hey, yeah. You know what? We don't kink shame here. Whatever. <laughs> that was really all I had. Um, there hasn't been much going on in, in the Fordian world. We did just have two planets come out of retrograde. And that's why probably a lot of people were feeling like shit. And it's probably why you still feel like shit. Because even though the planets go direct, doesn't mean that we feel it right away. So you got about another good week of feeling like shit. So oh, I was going to say, when is this stuff over? congratulations for making it that far it just depends mm. retrogrades aren't necessarily a bad thing i mean they're bad if you haven't been doing the work but who of us is really doing the work i mean most what's of us the work what do i need to do shit i didn't know that we had homework for this what's yeah you, i mean doing the work is just uh you know your inner self going going in, inside yourself and figuring out what things you need to fix and you know things like that and you're going to keep having those lessons over and over again you know and in a big way universally until you learn them so Get your shit together for the next retrograde because it'll be bad if you don't. So mm. that's just what it is. It's just a time of reflection. I mean, that's all it is. It's introspection. It's it's fine. But you still got about another week of this shit. So enjoy it. Um because <laughs> you're in the we're in the shadow of the retrograde because time doesn't again, just because it goes direct doesn't mean it hits us right away. So and it won't immediately. So there's a little, <laughs> there's a little random astrology lesson there for you guys. I have no idea what the fuck you were talking about. That's okay. It's okay. <laughs> well, you know what? I don't have the spoons to explain it. Yeah, either not about it or you don't. <laughs> so, the <laughs> you spoons? Do that to yourself. The, the spoons? spoons? Yeah. I'll yeah, tell you what, why don't, why, don't, why don't one of our listeners, you know, message me to talk about something besides trans porn and kiss for once and 
clue me in on on this astrology stuff. I Explain would... the pa- well. Good luck because it's really personal and it's not really something that you can be clued in on. It's like something that you you have to kind of learn by yourself. I know that's weird, but it makes sense what you dig into. You got to break apart your own birth chart, figure out how your planets affect what and where exactly, and your aspects and your ratios and your houses and your. It's a lot. It's a whole ass uh, thing. But start with spoon theory, um, because apparently you've never heard that term before. But spoon theory is a thing, and that's really cool. Look up spoon theory, you guys. Um, if you don't know about it, it's 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 an accurate way to basically describe doing things as somebody that's neurodivergent. So anyway, <laughs> I'm going to stop now. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I've, it's, I've heard that before. Well, it's been, it's been here, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Cause yeah. I've seen that on people's like Twitter profiles mm-hmm. where it's, where it talks about spoons and shit. And it's like, sometimes the spoon does this and sometimes the spoon does that. Right. No. No, all right, never mind. Don't listen to me. <laughs> Just look up spoon theory. It's fine. Anyway, um, gosh we're already so far in this episode without even telling a single spoopy spoopy story what happened <laughs> what is this happening? um it's okay uh as, as you can tell from you know this this uh title here we're going to be discussing our um our own uh you know spooky stories that we grew up with uh different things maybe they're local maybe they're not i, th- I believe a lot of these probably a lot of people think that a lot of the things they grow up with are simply local. Um, and then when you kind of start digging into it as an adult, you find out that it's really not. Uh, kind of everybody has their own version of, of this story. Um, I hear that a lot as an adult. Uh, I'll hear about people talk about certain cryptids or something like that. And they're like, oh, yeah, that's only here. I was talking to somebody about the dog man. And somebody was like, well, dog man's just a Michigan. Like, it, like, it started in Michigan. It's a Michigan thing. Like, it did not, the fucking dog man did not start in Michigan. If you really want to dig down the dog man rabbit hole. It started in Egypt with Anubis, but um, and probably even further than that, you know. So <laughs> Michigan does not own the Dog Man, um, but you know, I, I think that that's interesting, and I'm I'm excited to talk about some uh, some spooky stories. But Pat, you you know you you're a Chicago native, aren't you? Lived in Chicago your whole life, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. So you, I mean, I'm sure you guys have a lot of, um, you know scary stories why don't you go ahead and share one that you've always heard growing up so i have like i have like a uh, a big i i probably formatted this wrong i probably should talk about this advance uh so i kind of did a deep dive into um a couple things that are all interconnected but i guess the the first one that we'll start talking about is uh resurrection mary and that is a ghost story that is uh super super prevalent here in in the chicagoland area to where like you could you could ask my mom you know who well that's probably a bad example you could ask you could ask most people's like parents if they've ever heard of it or or what their experience with resurrection mary is and uh they'll know they'll not only know the story but they might even claim to have a friend or know somebody who knows somebody who uh had an experience with her as well right and Resurrection Mary is a um, kind of a vanishing hitchhiker type story. Uh, it's a type of folklore that is known from many cultures since the 1930s. Several men driving northeast along Archer Avenue here in Chicago between the Willowbrook, Willowbrook Ballroom and Resurrection Cemetery have reported picking up a young female hitchhiker. This young woman is dressed somewhat formally in a white party dress and is said to have light blonde hair and blue eyes. Uh, There's other reports that she's wearing a thin shawl, dancing shoes, carries a small clutch purse, and possibly she's very quiet. When the driver nears Resurrection Cemetery, the young woman asks to be let out, whereupon she disappears into the cemetery. And the story goes that Mary had spent the evening dancing with her boyfriend at the Willowbrook Ballroom, and at some point they got into an argument and she stormed out. Uh, As she ran away from the ballroom, she was hit by a hit-and-run driver on Archer Avenue and uh, was killed. Right. And her parents had found her the next day. They were grief stricken. They buried her at nearby Resurrection Cemetery wearing a beautiful white dancing dress and matching dancing shoes. The hit and run driver was never found. And this was back in the 30s and over the years, even today, if you're driving down that stretch of road, Archer Avenue, um, people say that sometimes they, they see her on the side of the road and they'll stop in the letter in the car or sometimes she'll just appear in the back seat while they're driving. 
And, um, you know, you had said that, like, sometimes you think that these these uh, urban legends are native to a specific area, but they actually are kind of more commonplace and spread out. I mean, this even makes mention of the vanishing hitchhiker type of ghost story. So obviously there's elements, elements of this that are repeated uh, in other areas or whatever. But I know this one is very specific to us. And I actually, the, the, the Manic Pixie Dream Ghouls, mentioned her specifically by name in an episode not too long ago. So I'm pretty sure that this uh, this legend is known of outside of Chicago, but I can't really vouch to how popular it is outside of here because I live here. But I could say here it's very, very popular. Well, that's very interesting because, you know, I just, I, I was curious. <laughs> so while you're telling it, I'm, I'm looking it up. And uh, we, I mean, we have the same story with the same name and everything <laughs> so that's really weird <laughs> for in in your area yeah resurrection mary here it is and what's that say i mean pretty much everything that you just said well it can't name the ballrooms and the cemeteries i mean that would be a red flag right there it sure you... does archer Ave- avenue that's it's no 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 fuck that it, in ohio in Ohio, hold on, stop. I'm not done yet. Uh, I'm reading about it. Resurrection Mary was known as Mary Br- uh, Bri- Brigavy. Um, she was returning from O'Henry Ballroom. Uh, the ballroom. Uh, oh, she was buried in Resurrection Cemetery. The ballroom, uh, the name was later changed to Willowbrook Ballroom. Right. Um, yeah, exact same story, but Ohio. No, that's absolutely not true. That's, I'm telling you. I'm, I do not believe that. I, I you're misreading something, or I. Okay, no, no. It, okay. So Google Resurrection Cemetery in what town in Ohio? Let me look it up. Resurrection Cemetery. Hold on. It's Columbus. Columbus, Ohio. I don't fucking believe this for a second. <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> <laughs> i'm telling you this is a chicago fucking story i'm telling you columbus ohio it's part of a catholic church 9571 north high street <laughs> i see okay i see that you have a resurrection cemetery but if i do resurrection mary columbus ohio nothing pops up resurrection cemetery well because it's not technically columbus it's lewis center it looks like and i don't know we probably have more than just the one from what i'm finding resurrection cemetery resurrection catholic cemetery um i think that we have a couple of them yeah it's a very common name for a cemetery it seems it seems to be very popular but so when you look up resurrection mary in ohio what's funny was that i wasn't even i wasn't looking for um resurrection mary i was just looking for hitchhiker stories um but yeah no it sure is i mean it comes the story comes up it comes up under chicago too but dude it's a chicago story i i i don't want to derail the whole (laughs) derail the whole episode by turning this into a 15 minute argument about whether or not it's native (laughs) native to chicago or not I, I invite the listeners to do the, the legwork yourself, but I trust me, it's native. You guys here. have Resurrection Mary in your state? Let us know. 773-59 weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I actually just had a, uh, I, I had a report, um, a paranormal report a couple of uh, weeks ago. And, um, and uh, you know, it, it, it was about basically the same thing. I mean, it was about a hitchhiker. Um, somebody had shared a photo with me of this weird ghostly like person that was in Huber Heights, Ohio. Um, they said that it was actually they were FaceTiming their friend. And um, when that happened, uh, they saw this lady walking down the road at like two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. And they pulled over to try to talk to her and she didn't speak to them. She just continued to walk. And they said that they saw the whole thing happening on FaceTime. Plus they had the picture. Um, I don't know if that's, you know, I don't know if that's a genuine story or just because, you know, it's spooky season and people are just trying to have fun. But, um, yeah, I, I, I thought, I think that would be, this, that would be a good place to insert this locally, I guess, as a local investigation. I'm still trying to figure out what road it was on. Um, we're having a hard time kind of finding out, but not really because in the picture you can see like road work signs and stuff. But then again, that's also most of Ohio. So I don't know. 
Um, but yeah, that, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> nice. That's all I had to say about that. But uh, you know, we also have the you know we have the faceless hitchhiker as well. Sometimes it's a man, sometimes it's a woman. Um, you know, hitchhiking. There's, I mean, there's multiple, multiple stories attached to this kind of just across ohio and different roads and things like that so um that's pretty cool um you know yeah i don't know should i share one now yeah is it my turn okay i'll go um <clears throat> one that i have that's like super local um that i didn't know about until in my teens was um the witch's tower and uh or sometimes called frankenstein's castle now my my actual friends that listen to the show they know exactly what i'm talking about um, but <laughs> it is uh, located in Kettering, Ohio, um, right off of Patterson Boulevard. And um, it is just this weird concrete tower um, in the middle of this park. It's now it's part of the uh, Dayton Metro Park. So it's just kind of on this path and it just it looks super creepy. But, uh, you know, the story is that, you know, you'll see a woman standing on top of it, sometimes a ghostly woman who jumps off the top, or if you park in front of it, uh, somebody will try to come up and open up your car doors, and nobody's really there, or you'll hear disembodied footsteps, whatever, anyway, all that stuff. Um, the interesting thing about this is that uh, somebody actually died there. Um, so a couple went to the tower and this tower, again, it's just a tower. I mean, it's like two stories. Um, but inside of it is just a, a metal spiral staircase that goes up to the top and there's no roof on it. There used to be a very long time ago. There used to be a roof on it, but there's not anymore. And, um, so this, this young couple went to go escape the a storm. So they went inside of the tower and when they got there, um they were on the stairwell and it was struck by lightning and the girl died the guy lived but the girl died and that's 100 percent true um so now of course people say that the ghost of this girl haunts this place and you know whatever i mean we go out there all the time just to take cool pictures and stuff but it's um you know it's whatever so right right up the street from that is also the patterson statue um so it's a statue of i don't know some famous dead guy and uh, it's him on a horse, and it's huge, but it's also, it's not just a statue, it's a fountain. And um, I've heard rumors that allegedly the bodies of that guy and his horse are both inside of that statue. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I've heard. So, that's another... Like they bronze the corpses or something? I don't know if they, if they did that or just entombed them within it, because it's a big structure. Like I said, it's not just a statue of a horse, it's like a whole big thing, like a big, it's a big fountain. So, I mean there's doors to kind of get in and out of it and so you know i just heard tell that you know, maybe they're inside of there um so i mean that's a possibility i mean maybe some of it was built with his ashes i don't know um but yeah hills and dales that's what's called hills and dales park it is you know and again they're both on the same road on each other with each other um <clears throat> it's just a, an overall spooky place so that's the witch's tower frankenstein's castle realistically yeah. it was probably built by uh by like a boy scout group or something like they really don't know it's just a big watchtower it's abandoned nobody uses it now it's all boarded up there used to be a big door and you, like i said you can go inside um but it's boarded up i've heard people say a lot that the spookiest thing about it is that it smells like piss on the inside so there's that <laughs> <laughs> it's littered with beer cans and piss of course <laughs> like a lot of people have probably gotten pregnant there <laughs> It was like so, my teenage bedroom, littered with beer cans and piss and fucking. <laughs> a lot of people got pregnant there. Right. <laughs> you know, I uh, I don't, I never got to go inside of it. Um, but they had just sealed it off just a couple of years before you know my time of going. But a lot of my older friends, like they've been inside. Um, uh, my my friends, they report they have a story where they saw these weird lights, um, right outside of the tower, and they took off and. Now, some of them say that it was just police flashlights, and some of them say that it was probably something supernatural or weird. I don't know what it is, but anyway, that's what they all, that, they were all fucked up on, on drugs and, and, you know, piss and beer cans. I don't know. Um, but, <laughs> so, that's my witch's tower story. Nice. Oh, there's that one. Um. I wanted to kind of to double back and talk about the actual road itself that Resurrection Mary, my Resurrection Mary, not your bastard knockoff fucking Ohio Resurrection Mary, 
But uh, my resurrection, Mary, uh, as I stated, kind of travels up and down Archer Avenue. And that road itself has kind of a historical significance to the area. Um, it was uh, the the area that the, the, the street itself runs through is basically from downtown Chicago southwest into uh, the suburbs, right? And it's like one of the original Chicago streets. And the reason is that it predates the city itself and was actually a trading route that Native Americans used to come in from the plains and bring whatever they were bringing to um, the Lake Michigan area, right? And uh, I, I have a quote here that I'm going to read from um, Edward Shanahan, who's a Chicagoland paranormal researcher. One has to remember that Archer Avenue was a Native American trail, and much of Willow Springs at one time was very populated by the Native American tribes and known as Indian Village Number 23. What also adds to the possibility for the reason of this whole area's paranormal spiritual activity is that during the 1890s and early 1900s, Indian burial mounds and grave sites were discovered throughout the village and destroyed by early residents in the village. These, those actions do not make spirits happy. North of Archer Avenue is the Des Plaines River, and shown on the deerskin map as Spring Lake, where fur trading would go on between Native Americans and the French traders who traveled the Des Plaines River. Less than a mile northeast of that, you find the Native American healing waters. Uh, this is just an example of the possibility of all the way the spirit activities and Willis. Okay, so the Willow Springs area itself is very haunted and i'll get to that like in my next segment but the other notice like besides you know uh, archer avenue willow springs resurrection cemetery the o henry ballroom another thing that's located just a little bit further south and west on archer avenue is argonne national laboratory and argonne national laboratory is the place where basically they built the first like four or five of uh let me make sure i get this right because otherwise i'm just selling all the fuck i'm talking about um the uh, turned out nuclear reactors in the 40s and 50s so like the chicago piles like one through four all of the 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 first nuclear reactors that were part of the manhattan project they were tested and built in this area argonne national labs on archer avenue and then transported to uic and then uh some went to iowa and some went to like nevada where they did like all the testing and stuff out there and the woods surrounding argonne national lab are supposed to be haunted as fuck too and i had a high school teacher that was a uh he was our he was our chemistry teacher i didn't have him in, in my class but my friends did i had a different teacher um and he worked at argonne and he would tell us that like you know people would always talk about seeing like floating orbs and stuff and in the woods at night and that uh there was also a lot of reports of like spirit animals that they would see running around the woods and they found out that some of that was actually because of all the crazy shit that's buried there there was like a bunch of white deer that had mutated and were living in the area Huh. And that these were like actual like physical like animals like they were there was nothing paranormal about them except they were like mutations, and that like a lot of the weird shit that people spotted like when they would oh we saw phantom deer, no they were just like mutant deer, and that eventually they had to come in and like sweep the area and like kill them all because they didn't want them fucking populating and it was like just bad press and shit. So I always whenever I see those correlations, this kind of goes back to like your Wright Patterson stuff, how like. You know that there's crazy scientific shit going on there, but then you also have all these reports of like ghosts and like stuff. But then you also know that the whole thing is built on an, <laughs> on an Indian burial ground, right? <laughs> so it's kind of like this Sven diagram of like, like it's a really fucking weird area. Um, and that's where we'll leave it for now. And you can get to your next thing. Wow. Unless you have any questions. No, or no. I mean, that's absolutely not. Um, you know that's well I and mean, that does sound very similar to to like right pat um you know of course the the big uh the big right pat story that we had all always grown up with was you know hangar 18 is hangar 18 and that's where they store the that's where they stored the roswell crash 
And, um, you know, that's not really just a local thing, but locally, you know, like we talked about before with the episode, um, just generally being around, you know, Wright Pat Air Force Base is, is that, you know, there's a lot of weird shit that goes on over there. Um, a lot of people report living in the area and just weird electrical dis- disturbances and, um, you know, allegedly the, the museum itself is like super haunted, lots of ghost activity. One of the houses there is really haunted, like on the base and, you know, all the technology and things like that. Um, and, I mean, just reach in and, and, you know, pull out whatever you want from that bag. Uh, you know, every story is there ever. And, um, you know, that's just something that uh, that we all just kind of grew up with knowing. It's just kind of common knowledge that, like, because it's not even just, like, stories. It's not like, oh, this happened, and everybody's like, eh, did that happen, or did it not really happen? Everybody just kind of accepts that the base is a really weird place. And living around the base makes it really weird. You know, I've got some people that swear that they fuck with the weather over there and all kinds of stuff. So, um, you know, that's, that's another one. Um, it is interesting I mean, how... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. How how easily we like adopt, like we're very quick to um, we're very quick to adopt these stories. Like it, it, as much as like you would you would think your average person is, uh, you know, biased towards being skeptical. If you look at the prevalence of these like urban legends and like local culture ghost stories, we're really not. Like we, we, we are, we do accept a certain amount of weirdness into our daily lives. Right. And when you talk about stuff like, you know, these stories that like everyone knew growing up, uh, our parents told them, our grandparents told them, and we just kind of accepted them. It's interesting that we're not a more open-minded culture, you know? That's true. I mean, I would definitely agree with that. Um, you know, for sure. Um, because like I said, a lot of it is just kind of I mean, I don't know. Then again, like, you know, I was always one of the weird kids anyway. So I hung out with other weird kids and that's the kind of shit that we talk about. <laughs> so, like, maybe it's not that normal. Like, maybe it's just fucking us weirdos. You know, I don't know. Um, I can't compare it to anything. And uh, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> you know, that's just kind of how it is. When I was young, um, we went to a because I'll be honest, when I was like a kid kid, like none of this shit affected me. I didn't know anything about ghosts and stuff like that. I didn't get into this shit until my like my preteens. And even then, like I didn't get into know Ohio lore until like I was old enough to have friends I could drive. You know, and um, you know, it just wasn't that wasn't my thing. I didn't sit around in my room and study for hours on end. You know, I'm not uh I wasn't that person. Um, you know, and until later in life. And um so I didn't grow up with a lot of this stuff, but when I was younger, my mom took took uh we went to this place. I had to do this school project or whatever. My mom took me and a friend to a local place called George Rogers uh, Clark Park. And um, I don't really still know who George Rogers Clark is. I don't really know what the park itself is. I went once as an adult and I got really confused and we left. And uh, But when, when we went and I was a kid, my mom, um, she was making it sound like the place was like super spooky. And she's like, you know it's scary down there there's ghosts down there and she and she was like telling this like horrifying tale i was probably like nine or ten and she's like starting to like tell these like super scary stories to be my friend on the way up there and she was like but worst of all there's something even worse down there and nobody ever talks about it she's like but this is 100 percent true she's like now all those other stories i don't know i'm not sure if they were true or not i can't tell you that but this one i can tell you for a fact because i've seen it with my own eyes She's like when you when you go down there, you have to watch out for the gay people. <laughs> we were like, what? What? <laughs> She's like, yeah, that's where the gay people hang out at is at George Rogers Clark Park, and they sit around there and they make out and they do their stuff or whatever. So like, I don't know. We're well, like, that's hot. Out. That's, yeah. My mom was like <laughs> talking about the gay people hanging at the park. So we're like hanging out. We're like walking around the place. There's a bunch of old structures and things. I don't. Again, I have no idea what this place is. I should probably. I didn't intend on telling this story, um, so I probably should have talked to, you know, probably should have looked it up sooner, but it's, like, getting dark outside, and, like, me and my friend are walking around, and, like, we heard some noise, like, we heard somebody scream, like, legit, heard somebody scream, but they were probably just, I don't know, teenagers being Getting fucked in the ass. (laughs) Whatever, yeah, and my mom stops, and she's like, she's like, it's the gay people. (laughs) And, uh, so, you know, we left. My mom doesn't hate gay people, by the way. I'm very gay, and she knows this. Um, but <laughs> I'm mostly gay and she knows this. And uh, anyway, um, George Rogers Clark Park, where the gay people hang out. 
you know, I I got to admit when we were uh, when we just got our when we when when me and my friends like just got the ability to drive, like when we all turned sixteen, um, the one of the first things we did was go to the north side of Chicago. So if you're not from Chicago, the south side is like very blue collar working class. It's where I grew up. And the north side is way more urban. And, um, I mean, it's like, it's a lot of like apartments and like three flats and, uh, it's where, um, it's like where the punk bars are and like where boys town is and stuff like that. And it's, it's just more artsy, you know, I guess if you were to divide the city, you would say, oh, the South side is like blue collar working class and the North side is artsy transplants a lot of people like when they move to chicago after college if they're coming from iowa or they're coming from kansas or they're coming from ohio or whatever they when you move to chicago you're not going to move to the south side you're going to move to the north side the north side has like l's and public transportation the south side really doesn't it's like family homes and like stuff like that so um the first thing we did when we could drive is we would go up to like where the punk stores were, the record stores were and shit, which was kind of like very adjacent to boys town. And I can remember being 16 years old and walking through boys town to get to like the alley or like reckless records or threshold or something. And, um, the level of excitement when you would like walk around and you would like walk past the store and they had a rainbow flag in the window and you're like, Oh my God, <laughs> there's gay people in there and like you'd be like all right it's cool or like you would walk around and you would see like like a like two dudes holding hands or something and you'd be like oh my god you know but it was never it, it was very titillating and it was very exciting but it wasn't like it wasn't like i was at the zoo like like oh we're gonna look at these people like i hope they do something gay no yeah you no know? i mean right exactly especially when you're young and you're really starting to figure yourself out and you know right. things like that it's like a new especially you know back then i mean for you it was like more like the early 90s for me it was more like you know the begin the late 90s early 2000s um it was definitely a different time you know? yeah <laughs> it was definitely I mean, a different time but if someone had told us like don't go to that park there's gay people there like we would have gone to that park <laughs> like we would have 100 yeah, exactly. gone yeah. to that park and like, just to see what the gay people were gonna trying, do like she was just trying to be funny you know she's she wasn't trying to like be an asshole towards gay people it was just oh no you, hey, you want to talk about a different time okay you're me it's the early 90s when you're talking about your mom's pov she's coming from like what like the fucking 70s and shit like yeah they're, yeah, they're, <laughs> they're completely different time we're so, like yes I, I, i'm sure that woman has no hate in her heart but she's still you know yeah. they'll still say I mean, stuff like that that's we weren't genuinely part. afraid of gay people like I could, no I could of course not that, but you know it, but it was just you know it was that was like one of the first like you know kind of like i said she was building up all these spooky scary stories and then that was the fucking punchline which is also gay people there <laughs> it was it paid off mom thanks <laughs> i'm telling it fucking almost 20 or pretty much yeah 20 years later on my podcast <laughs> Right. But uh you know, I've always heard that that place is really weird. Um, but I don't know if that's just because I heard it from my mom or because I kind of just always knew it was, or because I thought it was weird because there's gay people. I don't know. Um, but maybe I should <laughs> well, they, they tend they tend to inhabit the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that's that's a strange place that we have. Um you know, another another super spoopy place that is we kind of can't ignore um personally is um um well god ohio state reformatory is the old mansfield prison and the biggest reason why we can't ignore it is because um a lot of a lot of things a lot of big movies are filmed there like shawshank redemption was filmed there and um you know it's been featured on all these ghost hunting shows and you know it's one of the most haunted places on the entire planet supposedly um it's just an old prison uh, they do open it. You can go in for tours. It's like 25 bucks and you can go in and walk around yourself. Um, or they do, they open it up for like a haunted attraction every year. They do have like a legit haunted house inside of the prison, which I, think, I guess is cool. Um, I have not been yet, but I will be going by the end of this year. So that'll be nice. Um, but not too far from it is also Akron. And Akron's weird because it has Ohio, not Ohio State University, but Ohio University. And Ohio University um, used to be an, an, an insane asylum. And, you know, they now call that portion the Ridges. So it was uh, Ridges uh, Insane Asylum. 
And um, there was like a super old cemetery there with unmarked graves, you know, all kinds of fucked up shit happened. But pretty much everybody that's ever gone to school at Ohio, Ohio University um, says that it's super fucking haunted. I mean, all kinds of there's allegedly a room where somebody killed themselves in or something, a dorm room or something where they killed themselves in there. And like the wall and the floor still bleeds to this day. Oh, wow. Yeah, and uh, so it's, you know, super scary. It's really hard to get into. It's not hard to get onto the actual campus itself. It's the actual buildings that are difficult to get into. They want, like, a lot of fucking money to tour that place. They think they're hot shit, and that pisses me off. But um, you can still get to the ridges. You can hang out there. There's an observatory um, if you keep following the road. If you, if you stop at the ridges, which is the cemetery now, the ridges. Um, if you stop at the, at the ridges and you keep following that road up, you get to the observatory, and you go up there and hang out. It's a really nice view. But in Akron, Ohio, or, or I guess right outside of it, I'm not entirely sure if it's in it or right outside, there's the Serpent Mound. And, yeah. you know, we've talked about this on the show before, kind of. Um, I want to see that, yeah. And it is really cool. It's just a big snake, you know, that's been carved into the ground, but it's always, always been there. And it's nobody... old as fuck. It, it predates most modern archaeology yeah uh right whatever uh like theory like it goes back like a hundred thousand like a hundred fifty thousand years something crazy we don't like even that. know exactly yeah. who it belongs to i mean right now it belongs to you know the in, indigenous americans and the native americans because we don't know we don't know if it's theirs or not we just assume that it is because they were here before we were and so therefore and the snake was too so <laughs> you know we're just assuming it's theirs um you know so they they it's their land now and they own it um but it's a super cool place obviously a lot of really high energy there um because it's just really old and it does have some type of meaning to it and ohio's not really a stranger to these kinds of mounds we also have we just call them the the mounds and they're just giant burial mounds that are all over the state and we got multiple ones yeah and all these like super important people are stuck into these giant fucking hills and those hills are literally just filled with skeletons <laughs> i uh i had a i had a friend um who actually I interviewed on my old podcast and she was an archaeologist and she worked for like Motorola or AT&T or something. And her whole job was like when they put up these cell towers in these like rural areas is to do surveys and um, basically make sure that they're not building, you know, these cell towers through these burial mounds because these burial mounds are all over the Midwest. Right. Yeah. So if you're going to do like a string of cell towers or power lines or something that go across like, you know, a hundred miles, in the middle of Ohio, you you really need someone to go out and check that whole entire area because it's very likely that you could hit one of these things. Right. And if you know you need to plan around it because those the indigenous people have a claim; those are their mounds. Yeah. And you know if anything is unearthed during con the construction part, it's basically too late. You're the whole thing gets shut down. They come in, they own that land. And let's say you built four or five towers and this was tower, this was area was tower number six, right? Well, guess what? Everything's fucked up now and you got to hope that you can build around it. So it, it's a very, it's a, it's, it's a, a very important job that like a lot of companies spend a lot of money sending these people across the Midwest to check all these different areas and they find these things all over the place. Oh yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's. I'm not acting like it's a nuisance for us. I'm glad these things exist. <laughs> yeah. And I'm glad right. that we're I'm glad that we're treating them with respect. But uh paying you know when somebody you to do that, yeah. Yeah, when you talk about us building up the infrastructure of this country, you gotta remember there was a people here that were here a lot longer than us that that buried their dead all over the place. You know, the joke about the the Midwest itself is one giant Indian burial ground. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's that's yeah. what it is, you know. I mean, as gross as that is, it's it's fucking true. I mean and yeah, I mean, like I said, here we, we definitely have a rich history of, of things like that. Um, and so, but but Serpent Mound is, is something a little bit different. I don't know if anybody's buried in there. I don't think anybody's ever really checked because then you'd have to dig it up and everybody's kind of too scared to do that. And I don't blame them. Don't fucking do that. Don't bring that bad juju here. Right. Um, you know, but uh, no, it's a really cool place. So just kind of that whole area right there. Like I said, you got Mansfield Prison or, you know, Ohio State Reformatory, whatever you want to call it. You've got fucking, you got the ridges over at, you know, Ohio University, and then you've got the fucking Servant Mountain, just kind of in that one area. But not just that, 
you know, uh, not too far from there is, of course, where the, because I have to bring, I can't talk about Ohio lore and not talk about this, is where um, a majority of the Mothman sightings took place um, in Ohio, not, not just, you know, Point Pleasant. A lot of people don't realize this. There were more Mothman sightings in Ohio than there was West Virginia. And it was, it was, you know, again, I, I've said it before, but I'll say it again. It was a, it, it was an Ohio journalist who coined the term the Mothman. Um, so of course, you know, that legend's kind of always been around. It's, I'll be honest with you. It's not one that I, I necessarily grew up with exactly, but I feel like I probably heard more about the Mothman because I live in Ohio. You know, people, mm. you know, when I started working on this documentary, I realized that, like, people in other countries don't know who the fuck the Mothman is. Unless they're already, like, into this, you know, goofy shit. Um, <laughs> you know, they don't know who that is. So, they, um, you know, people don't don't know who it is. But, you know, it's it, it, it started here. I mean, the Mothman stuff pretty much started in this area. So, of course, you know, there's that as, you know, a local, a local story. Um, and then we also have uh, Woodland Cemetery. Woodland Cemetery is a big one. It's it's in Dayton, Ohio. Um, the reason why it's so important is because a lot of really important people are buried there. Um, and it's huge. It's a huge cemetery. I mean, the Wright brothers are, are, are buried there. And, you know, again, anybody who, who's anybody's fucking buried there in Ohio. And, um, you know, but it has its own spooky stories. There's this one grave in particular um, that a lot of people like to visit. It has its own kind of ghost story surrounding it because the headstone... Um, is actually a carving of a boy and his dog. This little boy drowned, and, and, and this is true, this little boy drowned, and his dog was so devastated that he died that the dog wouldn't leave his grave and stayed there until he died. And so they ended up commemorating the dog also with the boy um, and built a statue there. And so there's a lot of sadness, you know, kind of in the air in general. And um, so it's got tons of stories, you know, disembodied voices and footsteps and mm. shit being thrown at you and uh, demonic entities and just anything and everything that you can think of in a cemetery is that Woodland Cemetery. Uh, but it's a beautiful place. It's the highest point in Dayton, Ohio. So if you go to the top of it, um, it's it's also built. Actually, it's a, gi- it's, it's a giant mound itself. It's a huge hill. And uh, y- if you go to the top of it, um, you can see all of all of Dayton. And it's a great site. People get married and stuff on the top of uh, <laughs> Woodland Cemetery um because they've just made it so great and uh you can see woodland cemetery and pretty much most of my modeling pictures that i do is taken at woodland <laughs> so it's a pretty popular spot um but i'll stop talking now pat what else you got yeah you named some ones that i really wanted to hear about what are you talking about i don't know you were naming some stories that i didn't know anything about which ones like who the fuck is homie the clown <laughs> Homie the clown. All right, let me let me let me finish up my uh, Archer Avenue fucking trilogy here. Okay. Uh, all right. So the my first so all of this stuff is is kind of centered around the little village of uh, Willow Springs, and um my uh, Willow Springs in in, in this area, uh, it's it's kind of famous for a couple different things. One of them is the Ashbury Coffee House, which I'm sure. Um, People that are from here that are listening that heard me mention, they go, oh, I know that. There's beer coffee house. It was a real big hangout. It still is. It's been around for, I mean, it's been around, had to be f- f- longer than I have. But as long as I know, since high school, I know kids have been hanging out there. And it's a coffee house, but they have open mic nights. They do, there's a small venue upstairs where you can do, a band can play or you can put on an improv show or a comedy show or something like that. So people have like little events there and stuff. There's acoustic nights, there's open jam nights, open mic nights. Um, you know, it's kind of like a hub for kids. Like coffee houses are very big in this neighborhood when I was growing up. They still are today. Uh, pool halls in the 90s, but not really so much. I don't think it's, it's, it's cool to play pool as much as it used to be. But kids still, you know, hang out at coffee houses. And that place is supposed to be haunted as fuck. Um, not too far from there is <clears throat> this place that me and my friends used to refer to as the upside down crucifix house. And this was a house that was in the woods in Willow Springs. It was kind of, it's a very wood woodsy area in general. And, um, you know, you go down a couple side streets, you take a couple turns and you find this giant house. Uh, it's a mansion. I, I later found out that it's known as the Dietrich Mansion, 
And I'll, I'll give you a history of that in a minute. But my understanding of it when I was growing up and we used to drive past it is that um, it was a house that it's and it's built with like upside down crucifixes into um, the house's design. Right. Okay. So like all of the there's like pointed steeples by the windows right and they have like upside down crosses right and it's just kind of like built into the architecture a little bit and um it's not nothing anything like overtly like satanic there's not like you know a giant inflatable devil coming out over the roof or anything but there's all these like weird upside down crucifixes built into it and um we would drive past it and we would look at it and everybody knew about this in the area right so like me and my friends used to like you know, when we were in high school, we would like smoke joints and then drive past it and stuff like this. And if you didn't have anything to do on a Thursday night, it, especially like around Halloween time, you'd be like, let's go drive past the upside down crucifix house. And we get in the car and we drive out to Willow Springs, which is, you know, probably about 15 minutes away from where I grew up. And we would drive past it and that would be it. And then you would come home. <laughs> like there wasn't, you know, sometimes like some people would say they would get out, they would sneak up to it <clears throat> and, you know, stuff like that. But we never did. We just drove past it. And you could meet kids from other high schools and, and other groups of friends and you would bring that place up. And a lot of times they would know about it too. And they would have their own stories. Right. And when I was out of high school, when I was probably like 1920, I was at a party of the girl I was dating at the time, her cousin. And we're sitting around, I don't know, just drinking and talking and someone brings up the upside down crucifix house and i'm oh my god i went i used to drive past there and she tells me this story of her and her girlfriends now these these kids were like kind of like richer than us it was it was out in the suburbs and they had like an in-ground pool and stuff and they had a convertible right so they went so this group of girls went to the upside down crucifix house to drive past it and while they're driving past it and they stop and they, they're looking at it, a car comes out from the garage and starts following them. And they're driving away and the car is following them. And they had been smoking weed or whatever. And they're kind of driving and, you know, the car is just right behind them. And they get to the point where they pull up to the stoplight and the car pulls alongside them and there's an old man in them in the car and they're freaking out because they're in a fucking convertible. And I just remember this girl telling me that like she was like having like the worst panic attack in her life because she never realized how like when you I, I've, <laughs> I don't have a lot of experience driving around in convertibles, but like, you know, it's kind of like a neat experience, like the wind's blowing through your hair, the tops down, blah, blah, blah. But to be in that situation and to be at a stoplight in the middle of nowhere, in the, in the middle of the night, and you're fucking stoned off your ass, and you're in this convertible, and there's this car next to you with this creepy old guy who's, like, just following you. And she said it was, like, the worst. She was, she's never been so scared in her whole entire life. And this guy basically followed the girls around, and they didn't know what to do. This is kind of the time before cell phones, too. So, um they're driving around and uh eventually they drove to a police station and they just pulled into the parking lot because they didn't know where else to go or what else to do and uh the guy just kept going and doing like talking to more people and like doing a little bit of research on it so the story that i had heard about this house growing up was that somebody like a doctor had bought it and then killed his family and gone away and that his brother now lives there and his brother chases people off. Cause there's always people driving past the house, wanting to take pictures of it or sneaking onto the property or doing whatever. Right. And he also had like a lot of bicycles on the porch and shit too. Like he, it, like it was, it was, the house was kind of in disrepair. Um, but he kept like a lot of weird junk around. Like it had a very weird vibe to it. Definitely. Besides all the fucking, you know, upside down crucifixes and shit. And, um, 
the guy would go out of his way to scare. He would like just scare kids off if they ever got too close. And, you know, the stories about him, like pulling shotguns on people. If you were like, went up to it on foot or anything, or you went up during the day, he'd chase you off. And that, you know, if he saw you driving past or you were parked out front, he would get in his car and then come out and kind of tail you and scare you off. Um, now I did some research online and that's how I was able to find out that it's actually known as the Dietrich mansion. And there's, there's not a lot on it, but if you Google that, there's a YouTube video or Dietrich, yeah, Dietrich mansion, um, D I E T R I C K. Uh, there's a, there's YouTube videos of it where people go there and they take videos and they, you know, whatever. And, um, one, a, a lot of people that are local say, oh, it's really not that scary. And, you know, the guy that lives in there, he's more or less okay. He's weird and he's a loner, but he's pleasant enough. Um, and they also suggest that the that the reason that it's in the kind of weird, disheveled state of disrepair that it's in is because it was a stop on the Underground Railroad and that it's got some kind of historical significance and it's actually like a landmark and it can't be modified or repaired or torn down or anything, which I don't, I don't know. That's just one of, one of the things I read online. I don't know how much water that holds, but, um, yeah, I mean, as far as urban legends go or local legends, that was a, that was as, as kind of like innocuous as it is. That was a big part of my, my high school experience was driving past this place. And, uh, I know that it was kind of, it was very popular with other kids and, uh, yeah. Very cool. Well, that sounds very similar to the, um, the the church in Helltown that has um upside down crosses on it it's just a, a type of design you know it doesn't it didn't i don't think you know obviously it doesn't necessarily mean anything but yeah there's a church design like that in Helltown which is uh Boston Ohio and that, i mean that's another one that a lot of people know and uh grew up with is you know Helltown of course um which we talked about before i <laughs> talked about it at great length um but not necessarily one that i grew up with i didn't i wasn't even aware that it existed until you know I, I was adult an adult so i don't know um but i mean i've I've heard of that before but the chasing people out and stuff that one sounds like um sounds like the lady on in uh on fudge road here which is a really another another one that again i've told stories of plenty of times um fucking weird place um super haunted super haunted road super weird area it's right in the middle of dog man country here in ohio um, where the the Butter Street werewolf uh, lives, or the Beast of Butter Street, or whatever you want to call it, um, there's a, supposedly a Bigfoot in that area. There's satanic cults. I mean, everything is is around Fudge Road. <laughs> so, you know, that's another one. But but there's a lady that'll chase you off, and like legit, she will chase you off. And people just say she's sick of being bothered. Um, but I, I've been chased off by the lady before. It's an old lady in a brown Cadillac. I don't even think she's alive anymore. I've, we've tried to look into it, but. It's it's hard to know if she's still around. Her house um, still sits on the end of Fudge Road, and uh, or the beginning, depending on what side you start on. And uh, we were just there a couple months ago, and we noticed that the light was on, but there were no Cadillacs in the driveway. So I'm pretty sure she died. So with it, does the legend die? I'm not sure if she's not out there chasing people off the road um, anymore. But yeah, there's there's a lot of uh, satanic cult activity stories too. I actually, I don't know if I'm sending it to the right Facebook messenger account. Cause do you still have two Facebooks? No. Okay, good. That must be the right one. Uh, but you know, one of those, I, I had sent you those, um, those sometimes articles about like demonic uh, satanic activities in the, in the woods around Chicago and O'Hare and the eighties. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, there's another one. The one, the one I sent you before, I think it had more to do with the North side woods, like O'Hare. There's one about the Southside Forest Preserves by me, and it mentions Willow Springs specifically and talks about how it's a hotbed for satanic cult activity. Even though it, it's, you, you got to read the story because it's, it's like classic, you know, like hysteria, panic, because it talks about how police made this grisly, grisly discovery where they stumbled across, uh, you know, a scene of like a satanic mass where there was altars and animal bones and the, the trees were painted with blood. And then it, uh, <laughs> and then it, and then it says like in parentheses. Although the blood was later found out to be costume makeup, it's like, well, then they, they weren't painted in blood, no, now were they? they? <laughs> it's fake blood. And the, and the fact that someone used fucking costume blood and like this weird shit they were doing, they were literally probably making a fucking movie, oh, you know? Just talking, or just talking to people. I mean, just because. Or I tell you what, they probably found. Does it mention that they found? 
a rainbow flag in the area because it was obviously <laughs> the gay people. <laughs> yes. It's just the gays. <laughs> doing their, their butthole worshipping. <laughs> doing, their, doing their butt magic. It's fine. Not blood <laughs> but, magic, butt magic. You know butt magic. That's awesome. Uh, the homie the clown thing like this i honestly i would i would love to hear listener feedback on this one because i always i was always under the impression that this was one of those midwest like, tall let me, tales let me stop you for a second so pat me and pat talk about this episode and uh pat starts kind of just rattling off some local things and he's like you guys have homie he's like you guys have homie the clown right i was like what the fuck is homie the clown no i know who homie the clown is okay right? it's, it's a character from in living color yes right and so but this is not what you were talking about well supposedly somebody was dressing up like homie the clown trying to lure kids into a windowless white van and um i've never found any uh it's always if you google it and you look it up like when i was growing up i heard that this was happening and um that it was real and when I, when you go and Google it, it seems like it was this like urban legend that existed in Chicago and the surrounding areas for a couple, like it never happened. They never caught anybody. It was never, you know what I mean? It was, it was like leftover. Cause you got to remember like when I was growing up, like Gacy wasn't that long ago. That's what I was going to say. Is, is it because of Gacy? Right. Well, there's, it's probably because, yeah, it's probably like the, the psychic reverberations from Gacy mixed with Homie the Clown, mixed with just your average South Side racism. Um, but it, it, it's probably a combination of those things. But it never happened. But if you talk to people like my generation from like this area and you ask them about Homie the Clown, more likely than not, they'll be like, oh, I remember hearing about that. Um, and it's not true. You know, it, it's it's like like fact check verified Snopes bullshit, but it was it was it seemed very real in the nineties. Well, and like well, like you said, um, you know, it could have been like carryover from Gacy. Lauren Coleman wrote wrote an amazing article about these weird kind of mass hysteria events that happen surrounding clowns every couple of years. Yeah, so hold on, you, stop. So this was okay. before this was before twenty sixteen, way before twenty sixteen. And then in 2016, you know, he had kind of um, brought out that article again because we were having this weird rash of fucking clown sightings. Yeah. Like, what was up with that? Do you think people are actually seeing clowns? Yeah, I think it, I think it, you know, because it happened. I mean, that happened. The 2016 wave happened. I believe. I mean, I guess you know we should. This should be next week's fucking episode. But like, <laughs> I or, or we should have been, that. because I I I remember seeing. But maybe not. Maybe this. I'm just fucking projecting. No, I feel like the 2016 we have happened, and I feel like that was you know just people like copycats. You know what I mean? Because there's so many like Discordian pranksters, and like I feel like there's people that did that. And, and, and Lauren Coleman talks about that. But again, he wrote this article before the 2016 clown clown flap clown gathering. That's a juggalo thing, isn't it? Um, clown. <laughs> what do we call that? What the fuck was that in 2016 where everybody was seeing clowns? A I mean, real marketing like, campaign for it? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody talks about that shit anymore. But no, he, he, he mentioned that, um, you know, kind of copycat, not just copycat people actually dressing up as clowns walking around town, but like other stuff like um you know people faking sightings and things like that but that doesn't account for like groups of children going off in the woods and seeing groups of fucking clowns like i remember there, there's towns of people that were being fucking chased with weapons by these clowns and they were like trying to also chase down the the armed clown and like it was a big to do and like it was a big it was crazy it was fucking weird it was a weird occurrence and uh what was up with that shit maybe we will talk about that because i I don't feel i feel like nobody fucking talks about that it was uh okay so i mean if you google it like it's pretty much laid out pretty pretty easily i mean we could still do the episode about it but i mean like it's it's the it it, it's not gonna require a lot of investigation on our part it's gonna require google foo it's pretty much been explained It, it was it was a group of people it started in england and then it moved to green bay and then it happened in chicago and then it kind of spread and it initially it was it was three filmmakers doing viral marketing for a film that they were working on 
And it was just one of those things that kind of captured the zeitgeist. And, you know, that's what happens when your marketing cam- campaign is that fucking good. Everyone remembers the campaign. No one remembers the product. <laughs> you know, uh, we, we remember the clowns. We don't remember what they were trying to sell us. Uh, but they were trying to sell us something. And it just, it just, it, it everyone responded to it because the It remake was coming out. Um, but if you're asking us, like, the bigger question, like, why do we have this reaction to clowns? Um, I mean, I think that is, that's worth looking at too. Um, you know, it might be because of the fakeness because, you know, they have a painted smile on their face and we know that that's, you know, that's not really what's underneath. Um, it could be because of it, you know, I was born in a world where it already existed, the the Stephen King book. So I grew up in a world with with John Wayne Gacy was already the thing and it was already a thing. So when you ask me, why do people have this evil preoccupation with clowns? It's like, well, because of those two fucking things, these huge cultural milestones that painted clowns as being potentially evil and and malicious, you know, although um, I did have a friend that was a clown and uh, she was really fucking weird. She was really into clown sex and i could i could we could do an episode on that if you ever want oh, right. <laughs> i know she's not listening she moved on got married and moved on with her life and maybe we should show. uh bring her on the show and ask so her G- about her clown sex no, no 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 i'm sure she wouldn't do it because she thinks that clowns are maligned to get a bad name because she was a clown um but do you know that like when the you know how like the circus travels around like i don't even know if they do the circus anymore but like ringling brothers well, yeah. so you know they travel by train right yeah yeah yeah. because that's how that's how you remove like all these animals there's not like a caravan of like pickup trucks or like or like you know semi trucks going through your neighborhood with elephants in the back and shit they transport them all via train so when the ringling brother circus comes to chicago for three weeks the train pulls in somewhere uh you know some secluded train yard stops and then they 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 have trucks meet them at the train yard and then move the stuff the short distance from the tra- train yard to the venue right okay. but the clowns and everyone and all the performers they live on the train that's where they'll live off of for the next couple of weeks while they're in town doing these performances so the clown groupies <laughs> figure out <laughs> where they're staying and they'll go to the train and try to meet the clown performers and then go on the train and have sex with all the clowns wow yeah very interesting i had no idea that That sounds like a fucking nightmare to me that sounds like a thing that's for sure (laughs) yeah i my well my so my husband a lot of people don't know this i don't really talk about a lot my husband was a carny like legit like he he traveled around with the fucking uh i'm not gonna name who it is but um yeah i traveled around the carnival and you know i got to see the ins and outs and how that shit worked let me tell you a very toxic environment (laughs) yeah what uh what can you share i mean i i not even like anything like super like damaging or like gossipy but like that's such a weird um well not i don't want to say weird but like just a a different existence that i would want to know everything about i i don't i mean i I guess i don't really know what what to share about it um i mean it's not very topical just like i said i mean kind of similar even though they don't really you know the the carnivals don't travel via trains they travel in like trucks and cars like, yeah, yeah basically and, and so like they'll they'll um they'll kind of take the the like shipping containers and turn them into like dorms and you pretty much have a room big enough with just not even a twin size bed in it basically just a cot and like they have to keep all their clothes like on the bed or like they'll cover it or like they'll so they'll um they'll get a sheet and they'll put all their clothes like underneath the sheet and then like that's how they'll kind of contain it um lots of drugs lots of sex having sex with all these random people you know i don't know i don't know what you want to know about it um if you are most people like to work the games rather than the rides because you make money off the games. that's why they're always trying to push the games off of you because you make commission off that um but if you're going to work one of the rides which again nobody wants to because then you have to deal with the repairs and you don't really make any extra money um you want to work on a ride that goes upside down because then you can go and pick up all the shit that falls out of people's pockets they get phones and money and i mean so if if you are going to work a ride you're better off working a ride one of those upside down rides than you are working one of the games because you make a shit ton of money just picking the shit off off, off the ground so 
So you like would join up with them somewhere and then they go out and then do the, how long do they stay on the road for? Uh, well, it just depends. Like you can join different ones because you can join ones that run, uh, you know, there's different, there's different companies that you can work for. And there's like certain ones that will do like, um, like they'll only do state fairs or whatever. And like that, that's like the big of the big, cause those are the biggest events. So like you could travel around the country or you can do ones that are only through one state. So they'll only do, or they'll only do one portion of the States. Um, so it really just depends. Sometimes you can just kind of hit them up when they're local, um, so you can kind of go around to the certain town, you know, the little towns like here in, in Kettering, like I live in Kettering, but I live in Dayton pretty much because there's Dayton 15 minutes away, but there's Centerville 15 minutes away and Huber Heights 20 minutes away and Beaver Creek. So like all those will have like the same carnival will travel throughout it. So you can do it for like a month or not. It's, it's very laid back. You don't wow. even necessarily have to stay. You could just go work for the night and go back home if you're in the area, but, if, but you end up staying on the you know, in, in the shipping container, if you, um, you know, if you travel with them, obviously, or I mean, you could always rent your own room if you really want to. Most of them don't. Well, yeah, because you, how you're not you're not driving your car behind this whole thing, right? I assume that you're riding in the trucks. You can if you want to. Some of them do. Some of them get RVs, and that's how they travel. Wow. But they don't charge you rent or anything, so you've got pretty much all your regular living expenses paid. But like, you could eat. I mean, you need all the fair food you want, or you can go to the local restaurants or whatever. Yeah. So <laughs> it is interesting. Um, you know, it was kind of interesting learning about it, but yeah, my, <laughs> my ex-husband was a carny, <laughs> of course. What, uh, what did he, what did he do? Like what? He was, he worked on the rides. Yeah. And so they would, um, but they would tear these things. Let me tell you something about fucking fa- carnival rides or, or just fair, fair rides. It's the same thing. The fair and the carnival are the same fucking thing. You're not getting better quality if you go to the fair. It's the same fucking people running the shit. And that shit is dangerous as fuck because these people build these things in a day. Right. And I don't, I think people don't really realize that. Like you don't fucking park your shit. I mean, I'm sure you've seen them traveling before. They're all, they're all part of like a trailer. Basically all the rides are a part of a right. trailer. And no, no, they, there's, there's, they set it up. Uh, if you're for the people from Chicago, if you're taking 57 South right off 119th street, there's like a, there's like a frontage road where they always set up the carnival and right. it's, it's there all the fucking time in the summer. It's got to be there three, four times in the summer. And you'll see them the day before they set up. They'll all be parked there. All the shit will be off to the side. And then you see the way that it like kind of like it turns into like, you know, it's like a transformer where like the, the, the trailers open up into these rides and everything kind of spins over and opens up and then boom. And then it's there and then they can, you see how they pack it back up and they travel again. So that oh, that oh, yeah, there's like a big piece. There's like one big solid foundational piece. That's why they don't have wheels on underneath them because they right. just hitch and travel. But it's like one big solid piece. So then like you open the actual container itself, and then there's all these teeny tiny pieces that they have to put together. And these people that you're trusting to put together, it ain't shit and it ain't nobody. It's literally people walking up from off the fucking street going, Hey, pay me fifty dollars and I'll help you put this together because I need to go buy my fix real quick. And that's what they do. These aren't trained wow. professionals. These are just no, anybody and everybody. They don't give a fuck who you are. If you're willing to work, they'll put you to work. And they're going to pay you shit for doing it, too. So, you know, that's that's what they'll do. And so, but when you're a ride operator, you know, it's a little bit different. So you're not totally responsible for tearing your shit down. Um, again, it takes a team of people sometimes. Some of the stuff you can't just, I mean, you can't tear down by yourself, first of all. It, none of it you can. Um, but it is fun to kind of watch them. I mean, try to do that. Try to catch a carnival. If you can't catch it, at the beginning when they're putting the shit up wait until the end catch it at the end the very last night that night they'll start they'll tear the shit down and you'll see it it's pretty cool to see a carousel like in pieces on the ground like it's really neat it's really neat to watch a bunch of dudes climb fucking 20 feet into the air on on you know a boat ride and watch them tear it down like it's dangerous they don't have the harnesses and shit just climb up there and do it <laughs> Man. I don't care. you know and so it is fascinating um but yeah no i mean like i said these aren't built by professionals they're just thrown together you better figure that shit out while you're right there you want to get your money for the night you better do it did you so, ever travel with him no. no no he never he didn't travel. by the time we were together he didn't travel really i was trying i was pulling him out of it when we were you know getting together and um so i got the tail end of it but his best friend his best friend stayed with them stay he's i, th- I think he still fucking does i don't know if he does or not 
Um, but he'll he'll go with them. He would go with them uh, every summer and travel around with them. Um, he stayed with it for a long time. So we were familiar because sometimes he would go like they'd be in town and he would go and help tear down the ride or put up the ride and, you know, make his 50 bucks for the night or whatever. So did you meet him at the carnival? No. Oh, right. no, I didn't mean up the carnival. I was going to say, if you seduced him away from that lifestyle. No. That would be... <laughs> I don't think you I'm pulled him that. away. You're like, I'm no, don't do, the, don't do the duck game. I think, I think it was just, uh, I think he was just uh, done with it, honestly. Yeah, you, can only do, with... you can only sit there and run the Gravitron for so long before you're... <laughs> <laughs> before you're done with it no they're all a bunch of whores i mean that's another thing you don't want to sleep in a fucking shipping container so you'll meet somebody random at the fucking carnival and you go home with them that night when you get off work yeah you know or you'll go hang out in the local bar and meet someone there and have them take you home i mean you're pretty much you're pretty much a nomad so which is fine <sighs> if you're into that kind of thing there's nothing wrong with that it's just that personally i couldn't stand hanging out with a lot of those people a lot of different personalities i i assume yeah oh yeah so but anyway we've gotten way off track <laughs> as usual <laughs> so i think that means we're done um <laughs> unless you had anything else you wanted to share no i mean we went over home what else did i text you i don't think i i feel like that's everything i, mean, I had forgotten about homie the clown you know of course you know you, we got the regular thing you know saint same stuff everybody else has you get your bloody mary and your fucking uh you know whatever else people have just little things that you grew up with that everybody kind of knew about um sure everybody's got a crybaby bridge in every town everywhere you know <laughs> like i mean what you know well what kind of stories did you guys grow up with maybe you had something really specific to your family um you know that that nobody else really followed or Pat's apparently done. He's playing music already. So. <laughs> That's um, not true. Stop it. Wow. Four and then down. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, let us know. What kind of things did you guys grow up with? Did you grow up with, uh, did you, did, what about Resurrection Mary? You guys got Resurrection Mary where you're from? Nope. Uh, just in Chicago. <laughs> just Chicago. Stop have, with that shit. Did you have Homie the Clown? Um, you know, what, what do you, you got a witch's tower in your town? Let us know. Uh, seven, seven, three, five, nine, weird. <laughs> But, uh, okay. All right, then. Well, we'll see you guys here next Wednesday.